grapes. Check this out. Hello and welcome back to the Youth Group Reunion Tour podcast, the podcast that unpacks the Christian cultural touchstones you grew up with in the 90s and 2000s. I'm your host, Mikey B. And I'm your other host. My name is Jared. And we're back for another musical episode today. We had a, a series of Youth Group Friends episodes. We had a series of movie episodes. And now we're back on the music train. Yeah, yeah we're, we're really excited, excited about this band. Uh, this, this, this band, band I guess, if, if you had asked, asked me, um, you know, maybe a month ago, like, what was your favorite band in high school? I don't, I don't think, think that I would have given this answer. But having listened, listened back to them, I, I think, think that I enjoyed, enjoyed their music more than the other bands that we've been listening to, even more so than like Under Oath or whatever. I definitely think that I found a new, a newfound appreciation for Reliant K, mm -hmm. especially after I saw them in concert. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I, uh, I, I went back and listened to some of their newer music, the stuff that they put out. Um, I liked a lot of it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, so I definitely think that uh, I found a newfound appreciation for them. I think I... Just like having talked about it, um, again, Switchfoot, same thing. I think I can appreciate some of their music. Still don't like Meant to Live. <laughs> um, but I can appreciate a lot of that. And uh, like having listened back to Under Oath, there's a lot of it that I still liked, but not, not as much as I like remember liking it, I guess, in my head. I think that um, this band I kind of had forgotten about them because they were not. This is easily the least popular musical act that we have discussed on the podcast. I would say, would you say that's that's fair? We started out strong, yes. right? We had to start out with Reliant K because yeah. I think that's the biggest band, yes. arguably, that we've covered. Yeah, maybe second is Under Oath. Yeah. Third is Switchfoot, probably. Yeah, unless you count the lost episode of uh, Six Men's None the Richer, yeah. of course. But yeah. I think high that's the highest starting. starting. But yeah. I, I mean, in terms of like. Certainly, if you like went to our our youth group and you went there in you know 2007, let's say, and you asked them, you say, "Have you heard of Reliant K?" Almost everyone would say yes. Mm -hmm. You tell them, "Have you heard of Under Oath?" A decent amount of them would say yes, even if they don't like them, they would have heard of them. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Switchfoot. You say, "Have you heard Switchfoot?" Almost everyone would say yes. If you asked them if you'd heard this band, they would be. Three people that I know of that would say yes, and two of them are on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of a hipster. Yeah, I don't want to say hipster because they're not really hipster. They're like, not a hipster they're band. They're just they're just, just like, like indie and more so like, like they, they, they weren't were big. big. They never they never really hit it big like some of the other ones. Yeah, right. So the band we're talking about. So we'll just get into it. You're yeah. probably seeing the episode title in your podcast reader of choice right now. Yeah. <laughs> but we're talking about a band called The Wedding. And I, I have to think that maybe calling your band The Wedding yeah. made it pretty hard to find just I'll, by randomly Googling I'll it. I'll tell you this. If you, if you try to like search it on YouTube, if you search The Wedding, it's, it's only going to come up with stuff. And even if you put, search The Wedding Band, it's going to be Wedding Bands. It's yeah. not going to be – you have to put like, you know, The Wedding either either into – specifically into YouTube music where it's searching only for music that they can find it. Or you have to put like The Wedding Christian Rock – or like the name of a song or an album right. or something like definitely the wedding is like definitely a uh, a hard to find thing. So what I, what I would suggest is or an alternate name that could have gone with. Okay, I had a wedding T-shirt. Do you remember the shirt that I had? Do you remember this at all? Well, I know I had one, and so okay. maybe I'm getting it mixed up. But what I had yours? The, mine, yours, yeah. mine was white and black, and it mine, looked yeah. like the polarity. Uh, ah, yeah, it was like yeah. a brain or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, it was like yeah. a trace of a that's person sweet. with like a real Roman face. Yeah. You know? um, no, I didn't have that one, but that's, that's sweet. sweet. The one I had, it was a black shirt with a skull on it. It said the Dangle Wedding. Yes. Yeah, and I was like, if they called their band the Dangle Wedding, 
much easier to find, easier, right? and it's, it's basically crazy. the same thing. You that's know what I'm crazy say every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah the dango so wedding. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, with with with, with no cheese, the dango <laughs> wedding, and there's a picture of like a, like a skull on it or something. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I love I love that T-shirt. So they're from they're from Arkansas. Yeah, which I guess the music scene in Arkansas is probably not that big, yeah. but. The dangle wedding definitely tells me that oh, this was probably this some is southern, southern rock. Yeah, yeah, there's some southern rock yeah. influence in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Wedding, which is like, Could be is anything. this instrumental? Yeah. Is this smooth jazz? Yeah. Is this something that you know? Is this Zook? Like I, I've been <laughs> before. he's yeah. laughing because Zook was the the Zook, genre yeah. that we gave. Zook I don't know what the, it actually is. It, it was, was uh, the, yeah. We 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 had our, our fake band last apathetic letter on MySpace. You had to put like your genres, right? So we put down. I think like one of them was one of them was Zook because we just looked at the list and said, "What the heck is this? This is dumb. Let's make that." And then do you remember what the other one? Because you could pick three. I think we picked three. Two step. <laughs> but it is like a country subgenre, yeah. I think. And then hardcore. Okay, that sounds right. So yeah. I think so hard, hard, yeah. Could you imagine what that band? What a band was a Zook. <laughs> Two step hardcore band would sound like I don't know. <laughs> would, it just have like, would it just have like, you know, a guy playing the banjo and like screaming and then like some weird like <laughs> electronica in the background or something? I'm picturing like a Norma Jean esque band with a big breakdown. Yeah. But instead of the breakdown, kind of like in the wedding song, how <laughs> yeah. they have the trombone, yeah. and they, you know, with a trombone yeah. breakdown. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, yeah. but. You know, they have that song that starts out with the bagpipes. Yeah. And they have Say Your Prayers, which obviously has that sweet, almost ska trombone breakdown. Yeah. So it would be like that, except instead of a trombone breakdown, it would be like a banjo, banjo breakdown. Or like so we're playing a watch for Yeah. Yeah. Something <laughs> like jug. the jug. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that would be cool. Nobody's done it yet. I'm surprised. It could, it could be us. Yeah. It could be us. So. Here's how I actually found the wedding, and Caleb will know that this is legit, a legit method for discovering music. There were two primary- Friend of the podcast, Caleb. Friend of the podcast, sorry. There's other Caleb's out there. I get it, but (laughs) our Caleb, friend of the podcast, Caleb, he would know this too because I know he's a fan of it. Um, We never talked about it together, but I just know that we were visiting the same websites at the same time. So it was called- one way you'd find out about stuff is if you went to your local Christian bookstore and it was on the display rack of yeah. music from Forefront Records or Goatee Records or whatever the other Christian labels were that were there. So that's a way, number one, very analog, old school, in-person way. The second way is JesusFreeKiteOut.com. Have you ever been there? Uh, yes, yes, I, I have, and I definitely, definitely, I definitely know it. Yeah. yeah. So JesusFreeKiteOut.com was like – my source of finding out one, if you're on Jesus Freak Hideout, you are for sure a Christian band. So that passed yeah. the parental check very oh, yeah. easily. You can point to, okay, there's a review on Jesus Freak yeah. Hideout. Do you really think that a secular band would yeah. be on Jesus Freak Hideout? <laughs> no. Except for uh, what, what's the, what was the one band that was always, Evanescence. yeah, except for Evanescence. Except for Evanescence. <laughs> but that being said, Jesus Freak Hideout, for some reason they had, you know, good reviews of really small bands. There were yeah. a lot of small artists that were yeah. reviewed on there that I was like, wow, they don't have this CD at my local Christian bookstore. Maybe I can look for them online or on MySpace or whatever. And so um, I read the review for the wedding's first album on Jesus Freak Hideout. And it got like a three out of five stars, I think. Um, it wasn't like a blaringly yeah. great review, but they name dropped a lot of bands that I was kind of interested in at the time. I think they might have name dropped um, maybe Taking Back Sunday or Blink-182 or something like that. And I was like, oh, a Christian band that sounds like that? That's not mm. Pac Nelson or Stella Cart? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I'll give them a shot, right? What, do I, what have I got to lose? Mm. And so I actually looked them up on a site called Zanga. So the site that they linked to was not MySpace yet. Mm-hmm. It was like uh, it was it was Zanga. And have you ever used Zanga before? I I never used it. I heard about it, but the first um, like social media type of site that I had was a MySpace. I think when I was like a freshman in in, in high school or something, maybe the end of like eighth grade or something. I remember. The, I remember there was um, Live Journal, yes, and Zenga. Okay, and, and was there one other one 
that I'm that I'm missing? Uh, other live uh, journal yeah. Zanga. Um, there was like Friendster. Friendster, that was, was the, one, yeah. the proto Facebook. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah never I never had any of those. And then like I wasn't in. I like I didn't want to have a MySpace. I was just like I. Uh, for whatever reason. So I was like hesitant to get into it. But at some point it just became like so all encompassing, like yeah. in our like high school era, there was just like you had to have a MySpace. Right. Like you had to be friends with Tom. All your friends were on it. And yeah. actually you made a pure volume too, I believe. Yeah, I did a pure volume. I didn't count pure volume as like a social media. media. I thought of it more as like a um like a music discovery thing. Sort of like I, I, I used it like, like I would use like Pandora or Spotify or something like that to try and find music. The one thing that did keep from pure volume is for the longest time, the password I used for everything was my pure volume password because at the time, um, you, could, I, you, you could make a password whenever you wanted on these things. They didn't have like rules. Pure volume, they gave you a password and it had to be certain numbers, letters, uppercase, lowercase, or whatever. And I logged in ten times and I memorized it. And for the longest time, it was like a very secure password to use because other sites were just like, you could just be password123 or whatever. So I used, I used that as my password forever. And then I, that I, had to, that I, that I uh, you were like, yeah, I, I learned from you the, thing, the bad things to get past. <laughs> bad things to get Someone's going to log into your MySpace and put things yeah. on it that yeah, yeah. are sketchy. <laughs> yeah, change, 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 change my top eight and no, my, my song. <laughs> so um, the best way to describe Zanga is if anyone's used Blogger or Blogspot, mm-hmm. it was basically like that. So it was like this proto-Facebook thing that you can customize. Mm-hmm. So you would write these blogs you would upload your pictures and you could customize your template, but ultimately it was very much in like a blog format where like, this is my post from this day and they're long form things where you go through mm-hmm. and read um, what they are. So from the Jesus Freak hideout thing, I actually went to their Zanga page and saw mm-hmm. that they had a pretty big following and I'd never seen this site before. Yeah. You know, they're based out of Arkansas. I'm pretty sure they got big yeah. due in part to just, owning the Zanga platform because yeah. like anyone, any music tag, like they just showed up there. Like yeah. they, they had commented on other things or people were talking yeah. about them. And I was like, yeah. Oh wow, this band is actually really yeah. big. And so uh, to celebrate Zanga, um, I've hacked into Leanne's old Zanga blog from 2005. So Mike's lovely wife, Leanne, had, yes, a, had friend a, of the podcast, <laughs> had his daughter had a, to defend herself. A, yeah. Which I think you're getting set up. For the podcast, I mentioned this to me. Leanne was in the room and she said, what? <laughs> she, she, didn't, she didn't even know that this was happening. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm going to, so I'm going to give you a flavor of what a typical okay. blog So tell like. me if, you know, when I when I was tooling around on uh, AOL Instant Messenger and I messaged Leanne, her away message comes up and it links, it links me to here yeah. along with some other, either like a notebook quote or, uh, you know, some sort of... Uh, red jumpsuit apparatus lyric or something. Yeah. So what am I going to see when I click through this away message to get to Zanga? So when you click through this away message, you see a blog that is black and white and red, as was the style of the time. Yeah. And so I'll read a few choice posts here. I won't spend too much time on this, but it's funny to me. <laughs> so you all get to hear it. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. This post is from Wednesday, the 21st of June, 2006. Wow. From Leanne. I've changed so much in the last few months like you would not believe. I've deleted a ton of stuff from the site simply because it's just not me anymore. (laughs) I decided this site will be more of a journal, unlike my MySpace. That's just for chit-chatting and all that good stuff. (laughs) I guess I'll just put lyrics and poems and whatever comes to mind on this thing. This is the start of something new, something funky, fresh. (laughs) Creativity is on the rise. (laughs) The next post. Hide and Seek by I'm Ginny. <laughs> so, Where are you? We, <laughs> the dust has only... So, did, she, did she put the cuss word in? That's uh, the important... She did. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's she, that's did. edgy for 15, for 15 year old man. That's edgy. You know what? It was art. I will yeah. defend her right to use the H-E double hockey sticks <laughs> word here because, you know, 
I don't know. It, it meant something to her. Yeah. This was not a place for MySpace. Yeah, this so was, was just chit chat. And this is this is before the uh, the SNL, SNL skit, Dear Sister, and before um, what's the song? The song that's saying what you say by yes. Jason Derulo. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jason Derulo. Yeah. before before. Yeah, so she was she was ahead of, ahead of the game because I didn't hear about hide and seek until the Jason Derulo sample song. Yeah. So here's another post. This is the last post from Zenga that I'll read. Okay. I'm trying to give you a flavor here. Yeah, yeah. So the next post is from Friday, November 4th, uh, 2005. Oh, I guess I was reading it backwards. Anyways, it says, I miss the days when we go to the grocery store door just to buy a bag of chips. I miss the days when we'd go sledding and crash into old pine trees. This is all true, but I miss you in big bold letters. Is that you? Are you? Are no, you I don't think that was me. That's not you. That was that was a year before we started dating. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some mysterious stranger here who, uh, you know, apparently used to go and buy chips with. All I'm saying is, this is shortly after we went to homecoming. So <laughs> oh, take that, take that to me with you. Oh no! I will say. Show me your receipt for your chip bags. I will say. I need to know. Never, never, never uh, went sledding or bought chips with Leanne. So okay. you're, you're safe. There. All right. Well, maybe it was dramatic size. <laughs> yeah. This season yeah. is changing. So, so we'll see. So, anyways, yeah, that, was yeah, Zanga. Yeah. that was my experience with Zanga. I don't think Leanne so and I were just actually very, friends with Zanga. A very dramatic teenage blog style website. Yeah. Um, Somehow the yeah. wedding they got popular on Zanga because yeah. I can kind of mm. see it a little bit because their lyrics, mm. if you haven't listened to them before, their lyrics are a little bit poetic. And if you're not yeah. prepared for it, it may catch you mm. at least on their first album. Yeah, um, I, I would say one of the other things that I think was why they weren't quite so popular is that pretty much every band that we've talked about has been on maybe not like a major record label, but like uh, a notable one, at least in, in the, the Christian world. So even if they were on like, you know, Sony or whatever, they were on Tooth and Nail, which was like the big... Tooth and Nail, I always was like like a, a badge of like... Um, like this quality logic, yeah. for, for me. Like if I was like... If I heard that a band was a Tooth and Nail band, I was like, oh, okay, they've, they've got, you know... This is a quality band. It might be worth my time. And the other, the other one was like Goatee, yeah, which was, was which is Toby Max uh, record label or whatever. Now, eventually, the wedding did go to Tooth and Nail, but not at the time when we were super into them. They didn't, they didn't join Tooth and Nail until like 2012, yeah. uh, when we weren't you know, quite so into them anymore. Yeah. So they did have a song called death by Zanga, which yeah. is where I was going with that, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like an instrumental kind of like interlude track, yeah. but just kind of funny. I think that maybe that's lost now that a lot of people don't remember yeah. why or how that's relevant. And I just yeah. kind of caught the tail end where I didn't see them blow up, but mm -hmm. I saw that, Oh wow. They're actually really big on Zanga compared to MySpace, where yeah. a lot of bands were, but yeah. to your point, they stayed independent, which was yeah. really cool. And so, while there's probably some pros financially with that, there's obviously the cons. Yeah. Um, but how they sort of came into the Christian sphere is um, Mark Lee Townsend, who is the mm -hmm. guitar player from DC Talk. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, he also produced Reliant K's mm -hmm album. Yeah. He also produced The Wedding. Oh, wow. So, both, both of their, their yes. albums? Okay, wow. Yeah, so, so he produced The Wedding, he produced mm -hmm by Reliant K, and then yeah. he was the guitar player in DC Talk. Okay. Or at least the touring guitar player. Right, right, right Like right. Everyone thinks of Toby and Kevin yeah. and Michael Tate, but yeah. he was like the... He wasn't a vocalist. So exactly. He, died, he, died, he was yeah, a non-vocalist, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah. Um, he's actually right there in Tennessee, in Spring Hill. Okay, his, his studio is there. So, yeah. um, anyway, so that's kind of how you can kind of piece that together. And now yeah. looking at this track list, mm -hmm. this makes a lot more sense, right? Yeah. Because um, but talking about this album and sort of getting into it, yeah. one of the first things that really made me want to check this album out, other than this review, was the fact that Matt Thiessen from Reliant K was on one of those tracks. Yeah. And so to yeah. me, that was a feature where... Magic quality. It was a magic quality, yeah. right? When he featured on that John Rubin song. Yeah. Um, Nuisance. Nuisance. Oh, yeah. That song was a banger. Oh, yeah. I love that song. Still stand by that song. Oh, it's yeah. Like, that song rules. It's a music great rap video. rock yeah, combo. Yeah. Um, yeah, music video too. Yeah. It was so good. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be like another Nuisance track yeah. where 
anything Matt Thiessen is on, especially yeah. as a guest feature. Yeah. Really tastefully done. But King Midas. Anything he touches turns to gold. Anything he touches turns to gold plated records. So uh, I was like, oh, Matt Thiessen's on this. I got to listen to it. And, yeah. um, and actually just kind of getting into the review portion of this first album. That actually wasn't my favorite song. No, the, no, the album, not at all. Not but at it all. was the first one that I went to listen to yeah. when I, I purchased this album. So, so what I what I would say is, um, at least for I don't remember how I heard about the wedding. Presumably, it was through you. That's that's my my best my best guess. Um, and presumably, it would have been a little bit. I would have been a little bit late to the game because you and I probably weren't really friends until I was probably like a sophomore. Or so. That sound right, probably. Yeah, sounds fair. So around 2006, which would have been uh, after their first CD but before their second one, which I think is correct because I'm pretty sure I remember their second CD coming out. I'm pretty sure I, I remember that. And so um, I guess not in the ground floor, but in before most people, I, I would say. Um, I don't remember exactly how I heard about it, but I remember – all the songs I heard, I liked a, a bunch of them off of that album, which um, at the time, sometimes, you know, you couldn't, iTunes was just kind of starting to be a thing. And I wasn't uh, in the, the Limewire area to think of songs, you know, one by one. And so I'll comment on that when the statue of limitations. Is <laughs> and, uh, and so for me, to, sometimes you'd be like, um, you get a, a CD like Aaron Carter's CD because you like Aaron's party. Right. And then, the, to be fair though, that song, that CD did have I mean, Shaq and I Like Candy. So maybe <laughs> not a good example because that did have, that have three songs that I like. Um, but sometimes you get a CD because you got like one song you heard on the radio or whatever, and then the rest of it would just like suck. You would be like, it would be like their one outlier song, and then everything else like wasn't really anything like it. This one, looking through it, so before we recorded today, I went through, I listened to their entire discography, um, which not super challenging as opposed to someone like Switchfoot or like, okay, they have three full albums and an EP. Uh, and then they have a like a second EP, but it's basically just alternate versions of songs that were released elsewhere. Um, so I went through, I listened to everything. So this first CD, um, Mike, looking at it, is there uh, how many songs like stand out to you as like ones you like really strongly remember? Because when I did it, I'm thinking one, two, three. I think four that I remember, like like when it played, I was, I I remember the words to this. I could sing along to it instantly, no problem. Um, and then uh, probably another, you know, three or four that I remembered when I heard them, but you know, didn't know the words quite so much. This this album, I think, had a bunch of songs that I really enjoyed. Um, listening back to it. Do you have any, any that, that stick out or that you want to we want to touch on? Yeah, I think for me, there's one that is like it, it's the best song on the album for me. But is it like the regiment? It's like the regiment. You know, baby. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, say, let's go. It's, it's a great pick. So, wake the regiment is one of the like the two songs where they actually yeah. scream in it. Yes. I don't know if that's just why it rules, it, but. Um, it was very hard. Like yeah. it was like whoa. Yeah. They kind of like, melt your face yeah. off. It was. I mean, it was like. I mean, it, it was like the same level as like on your own. Yeah. Or, you know, it was, it was that. It was yeah. that type of screaming. Yeah. It was, it was like a, they were, that yeah. song was like a great bridge if you liked yeah. Under Oath. Yeah. You could like that song. Yeah. But you, it was also a bridge for people coming the other direction yeah. from something more pop punk to yeah. like it was tastefully done in just like yeah. a little portion of it. Yeah. It. It's basically one part of the song where it gets, so, um, it's, it's now a good time, I think, to, to bring up that, um, Mike and I have seen the wedding play live. We have. We have. It was, it was uh, in, when we were in high school, I think it would have been 2007. They were probably touring for their new album that had released that year. Um, we have a minor league baseball team in our area, the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. Right. And so the Mahoning Valley Scrappers would have like, you know, like any minor sports league or, or you know, even major, they have like special days where things are happening. 
uh, where you know, like you can get hot dogs for a dollar, and you know, other all kinds of other stuff, or like they bring in all the the high school mascots for the day, or whatever. It's teacher night, yeah. or yeah. And, and so, one of the things that they, that they did one time is they had the wedding come, and the wedding's going to perform after the game was over, yeah. and there's going to be fireworks and stuff. Um, and so they would do this with other like live live acts as well, but one of them was the wedding. So we were like, we gotta go to the Scrappers game. So we go to the baseball game. The whole time there is like, yeah, whatever. Get this baseball game over with. Do you want to know what happened at this baseball game? Uh, tell me. I don't. I I, I, I remember the the concert. I don't remember. Is yeah. something else? This is one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. Wow. It's, it's taken me a long you're gonna, time. You're gonna admit to it on mic. I'm gonna bear all my soul here. For all <laughs> That, you know, when people talk about standing before God someday, yeah. like this is one that I cringe when I think about because <laughs> it was a real jerk move. But my cousin Tony was there. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Not, ben, not to be clear, not Tony, yeah. our recent guest. Not the last yes. Tony. Tony, who hasn't been on yet. Yeah. Sorry, Mandy, if you're listening. Um, don't <laughs> tell him that I remember this story. <laughs> so he was just at a certain age where he just loved harassing people for no reason. He was just – He was a punk kid. Yeah. And it was funny. Yeah. And I egged him on yeah. and he egged me on. It was just and like a bad combo, Tony, especially when we were bored. Tony is how, – how much younger than you? Four, four, three years. Three years younger than you, okay? So at this time, Mike is probably 17. 17. Yep. Does that sound right? He's probably so, 13, so he's, four, so he's like an eighth grader. This is the perfect the age punkest, to be annoying. The yeah. punkest age. <laughs> So for for some context, um, we went on vacation together, and he kept <laughs> um, he kept telling people, "I'm going to say his last name because it's really like his first name." Okay, can I say Jeff uh, F. Oh, okay, we can say Foose. I think we have to say Foose. <laughs> okay, it doesn't make sense <laughs> talking around it. Foose, so yeah. he, he, we we went to a water park. We went to Bush Gardens together with our families, and he walked around. And he just like go up to random people and say, "Hey, keep your foos loose." Yeah. And then sometimes they get really weird yeah. looks because they think like, well, "What is he yeah. actually talking about?" So, yeah, so, so we had this guy who went to a church. Um, he was an awesome drummer. Okay, his name was we never called him the Foos because um, that was that was his last name. But uh, when he when he was like going nuts on the drums, he would say, "The Foos is loose." Yeah, and, and so, so then it became like you would be like uh, unloose your foos yes. or whatever you'd say. You'd say to people to be like, yeah. like get wild, like get you know, get, yeah. get, get, get like the foos out there. Yeah. So he just telling this to people at the water park, like random strangers that were like, you know, yeah. you hear that from some punk kid. You're like, yeah. was that an insult? Like, yeah. is that something that I don't know about? Yeah. Like, it sounds kind of yeah. dirty. People <laughs> checking their flies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so like, those are the types of things that you know we enjoyed doing because yeah. it was funny. And so, you know, it was a minor league baseball game. The teams were totally irrelevant. It was yeah. probably the Mahoning Valley so, so Scrappers. Yeah, was long gone yeah, off the Scrappers. He was long gone. <laughs> we were probably playing playing like, for the Yankees or the Indians or yeah. whatever. We were, yeah. It was like the Scrappers versus the Batavia Muck Dogs. Or yeah, something. like that's what <laughs> the that, Akron Rubber Ducks. Yeah, it was like some irrelevant team. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we were just kind of moseying around where I think we had seats, but. It was so low key that no one cared. Yeah, we, we, we definitely had to like pay to get in or whatever. Yeah, we yeah. had like bleacher seats or yeah, whatever, but they were just yeah. like vague seats yeah. that we just, you know, halfway through the game, don't, don't totally hate yeah. any kind of sport. Yeah. It's so going to a baseball game was torturous. And yeah. I don't know if he came for the concert or just came because it was something to do, yeah. but he, we got bored really fast. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were walking around and, you know, we went. You know, the first base side, third base side, outfield, whatever. We just moseyed around yeah. and just started. Just so trying to get through these dynamics so we can get yeah, the way exactly, the, get the show on the road. Exactly. Yeah. So um, we we post up behind the, the third base side, and um, there's a foul ball that comes our way. Mm -hmm. And there's a kid who's about our age. Like, he's 13 or 14 or yeah. 15. He wasn't, like, a young kid. Yeah. It wasn't, like, an 8-year-old. Yeah. It wasn't, like, an adult either. Yeah. It was, like, a high school age kid. Yeah. He caught the foul ball from mm -hmm. whoever this, this player was. Yeah. And so he put his ball glove and the ball, the foul ball that he caught, yeah. uh, in the seat underneath him. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, he had a, a permanent marker in there as well. Yeah. It's like he had another ball that had, you know, some some autographs and things like that that he was collecting. Yeah. And Tony was like, hey, Mike, I dare you to take his baseball and autograph it. The <laughs> <piece is loose. laughs> <laughs> so, and so, and so I can still see this, this, this happening. I try to be cool about it. Mm-hmm. I grab the sharpie, yeah, and then I reach down like I'm picking up something else, yeah, and I grab the baseball, and then I write in like really chicken scratch like, yeah. on the like, the foul ball, like yeah. keep your foos loose, foos <laughs> <laughs> on the baseball, and I go to send it down. And the kid happened to like reach like for the glove to like check on it, yeah. and he saw that I had just got done setting it down. <laughs> and now it has this ridiculous saying on this like prize trophy foul ball that he was really proud of. From, from a no name player, from a no name player. To be fair, yeah. that's how I rationalized it in my yeah. mind. But um, he was like, he was really ticked <laughs> off, but his parents weren't around, so he just left. <laughs> so he left to go to another section, and we kind of like watched out for him, and like he was yeah. talking to his his dad or whatever and was yeah. like his dad got kind of mad about it but yeah. he couldn't find us or we like watching it from like <laughs> <laughs> you know but uh you know i feel kind of guilty about it now that <laughs> i remember this poor kid who probably was actually really into the scrappers like it seemed yeah. that he's prepared enough to bring you know yeah. baseball an autograph and so I defaced and vandalized his ball with the name of the drummer from our church. We thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I've never told that story to anyone. I don't even think Tony would remember it. But it's just burned into my memory because like, the guilt was just so strong that it was like, Dude, I did nothing to provoke you. It was like completely undeserved. And, uh, yeah. I, I wonder what. What was going on that I wasn't there when this was happening? I, were we there with like a bunch of people that I would have been? Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of people from church who ended up coming. Yeah. And I think that we started off by sitting in the section together in the yeah. bleachers. And I know we hung out probably for a little bit, but, you know, like yeah. I said, I think there's a fair amount of people there. Um, mm. I think my sister was probably there. I yeah. don't really don't know why we would go separate. So if know, my sister was there. Yeah. My. My cousins were probably yeah, there too. I'm pretty sure that uh, our friend uh, Matt and probably his brother yeah. Pete were there. Probably, yeah. um, maybe some other people from. Maybe it church. was a church-ish event, or they yeah. promoted it at church, like yeah. some sort of. You know, thing. Like, there's some Christian band playing, and we're like, we can vouch for them. <laughs> they rule. Yeah. Well, previously, they did the Newsboys, yeah. and the Newsboys they like actually played where the field is, yeah. right? So it was like a big production. It was a big deal. So this was when they did the spinning drum sets uh-huh. and all that stuff. So I thought the wedding concert at this field would be the same type of thing where they do the mound yeah. and like bring the stage out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was after a game, I was actually really surprised when they're like, hey, and stick around after the game for a concert by the wedding. Yeah. It's where the, the kids, it was like the yeah, kids' so, area. So what it was is there was like this, you know, cement, big flat area where they would sometimes have like inflatables or other things for like kids and stuff during the game, like a kid zone type of thing. And they had a stage down there and that's where it was. That's where the, the game was. It was if you were at home playing, it was on the, the third base side and then in like towards the back, towards the outfield. So it was like already a surprise. So given those events, you know, I wanted to yeah. just watch the wedding and have a good time and not think about yeah. what I did. I hope that this kid wasn't a huge The Wedding fan. Yeah, he's exactly. Hanging right. around, just like, trying to get, get them to sign the ball. <laughs> I didn't want to get sued or beat up or anything like that. So um, anyways, yeah. So it was really weird because I thought it was going to be, you know, on home plate or whatever. Mm-hmm. And a big stadium. It turns out it was just like this sidebar type of thing where um, we well, played. Well, I'll say is much better in the long run. Here's yeah. why. Um, I remember this concert distinctly that you, we could go, you could go all the way up. We were, Less than a foot away from the singer yeah. the whole time. We were so like, I, I remember there wasn't like a ton of people at this concert, maybe. I mean, being like very generous, maybe 50 people, would you say, um, that like hung around afterwards. Like, and some people were just like, 
oh, there's you know there's a live band playing. Like we're we're gonna stay to see that or whatever. But uh, I don't know that there was anyone specifically there to see them other than us. Mm-hmm. Everyone else was kind of like we're at this game. And now this thing is happening. Maybe we'll stay for it too. Yeah. Or I got dragged to this church event sort yeah. of thing that yeah. my parents wanted me to go to. So I guess I'm sticking around for yeah. it. So so there we are. We're all the way up front, like very, very much like right in front of like, if I wanted to, I, we could reach out and touch them. That's how close we were. They had no sort of like security or like, like any sort of like thing that was keeping you away from them. Right. Um, and I remember... Uh, for for whatever reason, that I have this memory of them having some sort of trouble with their monitors. Um, Do you remember that? They had to switch out at a monitor in the middle of of the of the set. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, the monitors are the things that they wear every year so they can hear what they're what they're doing. Um, there was something I don't remember if it like died or whatever. But I remember that being a thing that had happened. It's because I remember like in the middle of something like flew it, like he like took it out because it wasn't working or whatever. And then they like got him another one or something. But um, so there we are. It's me, it's Mike, and then I remember um, our friend Matt was also like pretty into them. So like we're very much front and center for this band the whole time, and we're like. Singing along to their song, who would have like know the word? We're, we're like very excited to be there. Um, and the thing that I remember happening is when they, they play Wake the Regiment, right? They get to the part where it's the, the really loud scream where he screams, Wake the Regiment really loud. The guy gave us the mic oh, and let us sing it. Me and Ray Mike yes. gave it to the, like. I can't remember if he held to us or if he physically gave it to us, but I remember, I think he gave it to us. And I, I remember you, I, I had one hand, like, one hand on it, and I remember we were like, we were very. Oh, so <laughs> <proud. laughs> <laughs> Why is that so wrong? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we were, I, what I, now thinking back on it, I'm sure this dude was just like, I don't want to ruin my voice and scream yeah. this. And I mean, like, these kids obviously know the words. Right. They're really into it. Like, let me make their day. And he did. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about it 15 years it later. Was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was great. And it felt yeah. so – I've never been at a concert like that. It was so that, cool. It was like, we literally were the only people yeah. who knew. Yeah. Not it was only, like when I would go to your high school band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would just be me and you. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a deep cut. That's not even on my school. <laughs> I'm the only person that's going to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike <laughs> – uh, we'll, we'll we can tell, tell. We won't tell the whole story, of me, but here's the quick story. Uh, Mike made this like this song about some dude at, at not even his school, right? He was, no, he was yeah, an friend. Yeah. Um, and it was it's just like how it was just it's not it, sensible. Yeah, it was it's just like it was just, it was just, it was just um, it was like Vinny, you're really hot. Vinny, you are fubu a lot. Vinny, where'd you get that tan at Tropitan? And yep. then you would spell. Tropitan. Like a commercial. Yeah, like there's a commercial for a local painting shop. I spent so much time thinking of how they cram the syllables into that commercial because I was like, how do they say yeah. Tropitan? Yeah. They like spell it out so that it's like Tropitan. Tropitan, and then, Tropitan. And then they spell it out. And I was like, how do they do it? It's like T-R-O-P-I-T-A and it doesn't yeah. like sound like how they do it in the commercial. Yeah, the way that they, they did it, I think, is instead of R-O, they say Ro. Exactly. And that was a Ro. Yeah. And that was incorporated into the song. Yeah. So where did you get that tan at? Tropitan. Yeah. T-R-O-P-I-T-A-N yeah. is the bridge in yeah. the build up of the song. <laughs> anyway, so Mike <laughs> made that song as like a joke to play for his friends and I would go to all of his, his band's high school shows and I would yell at the end of every song, play Vinny. Yep. And eventually Mike would do it and everyone else in his band would take a break yep. for about 30 seconds because that's how long the song was. It was a solo song. Yeah. And everyone in the crowd would take a break because <laughs> no, one, no one understood what it was or or enjoyed it except for me and it was just me going nuts yelling for 30 seconds. And then... it, was, it was neither good nor funny <laughs> for the average person. It was, but it was funny to us. Yeah, and that's it, was all that. it was a joke for me and Mike. Yeah, and right. maybe Tony. Because yeah. <laughs> it originated from yeah. Frank Paul. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So it was just like, I've never had an experience though like that at a concert again, where we awesome. literally were the only people who we were singing every yeah. word. It was so small. It felt like they were just playing to us yeah. because it was very much like we were like, we were like, we were like in awe that this band was here. We were like, we love them. We love this band. We thought they were so cool. One of the reasons I think I like them so much is I think this was like, this is before like the like the like it was cool to be hipster, but like I think that's what it was. It was just like I'm the only one that knows this band, yeah. And so it is cool because only it's it's a secret, right. and only I know about it, yeah. And that's why one of the reasons I thought they were so cool. They were so good, yeah. for what they were, and it just yeah. I just feel like they didn't have that same. They, they, I feel on. like if they had been on tooth and nail from the start, yeah, they could have they could have definitely got all there. Yeah. Um, so, of the songs that are on this album, when we re-listen to it, so they've got uh, Morning Air, that song rules. Mm -hmm. That song's great. Move the City, another great song. I like that one a lot. Wake the Regiment, obviously, this, for me, is like the the pinnacle of the album. Like, this is this is their best song. This is like the song that, like, I would tell people, like, dude, Wake the Regiment rules. Mm -hmm. um, I think... I truly believe that Wake the Regiment is is right for some sort of like montage yeah. in like a movie. Like you know those montages where they're like they're getting ready for a fight, they're going around like 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 putting shells in a shotgun or like like putting on like a like a vest or like getting like getting ready for a fight. Like if you just have that part of uh the build up uh, to the big screen where like Wake the Regiment, we're marching on yeah. to tonight. If you play that for like 30 seconds in some sort of a movie. Now, I think it would have to be a very specific type of movie or TV show. It can't it be Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it couldn't be, it couldn't be like John Wick. Okay? Um, it can't be something like that. But if it's some sort of like teenage, yeah. angsty, CW or PG-13 movie where like, like, like um, if – if it was like a movie like Red Dawn, mm -hmm. like that movie type okay, of movie yeah. where it's like some high school kids are gonna like get into a fight or something, yeah. like this, I think would be one. This has to be cheap to get, like yeah, to get the rights to, because looking like looking at um, on Spotify, Wake the Regiment has sixty six thousand plays. That's criminal. It's, it's yeah, absolutely clearly criminal. underplayed. That's I have to have. A hundred of them, at least. Yeah, least that's for wow. me. And, uh, injustice, my yeah, sense true. of justice. Is really and, upset. and so, like, you know, like, like for any music, uh, any uh, TV or movie producers that are listening to this podcast, license this song, put it in a movie. It's a, it's gonna rule. I'm gonna make a movie just to put it in. Yes, a, you'll get it. You'll get it so cheap, it'll rule. <laughs> People yeah, like, what's what is it? this? Yeah, it's yeah. gonna rule. You can't do uh, any worse than some of the royalty-free music yeah. that's on Netflix shows these days. Yeah. I mean, uh, so those, those I think are the three best songs on the. If I had to rank them for this album, I'm saying "Wake the Regiment" number one, obviously, uh, then uh, "Morning Air" number two, "Move the City" number three. Okay. Um, and then when I re-listened to it, I really liked "Song for the Broken." Yeah. Much more than I remembered it. Uh, when I it it uh, it hit some sort of a different way for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I for me those are those are the four best songs yeah. for me. Um, one thing that is really interesting, I think, is there's also um, this is a Christian band. They did have some songs that were very, even though they didn't say Jesus or God, and they're very explicitly Christian. One of them being the Price for Love, mm -hmm. which I think, is, if I'm remembering it correctly, if it's the right one, it was like. Um, it was like he died. Never yeah, forget the price, price of love, or right. something, something like that. Uh, it very much like has um, Christian Christian lyrics and themes in it, uh, which was which was pretty cool. Because if you were you know playing a, like a band that's doing a lot of, of screaming like this at the time, obviously your parents are going to think like, yeah, what that's is a sick band? band. Right. And I said, no, 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 mom. Listen to this. Same no, 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 not so quick. <laughs> Say, the song for the broken was yeah. probably one of their more spiritual songs too. Yes. Just in terms of like the yeah. Christian theme, it's mm -hmm. fairly obvious when you hear mm -hmm. the lyrics, but it's not so in your face that you're like, "Whoa, this is like yeah. totally Christian." Who would you say that the wedding sounds like? So for people who have made Man. it this far, like, what are some bands? It's really hard for me to put them in a they, genre. They, I think, in their in their first two albums, I think are very. Very 
unique, I think. I, I, I like they have elements of like ska. In you know, some of their, like, especially in the second of polarity, they have like brass yeah. parts that are coming in that like but then they also have like their hardcore is I, I really don't know that I have a good like parallel to like yeah. what would be like because there are parts of them that sound like bands but not but like we mentioned like the part in with the regiment where he does like the really like intense scream yeah, that, like that part maybe has some under oath you know uh, under oath essence to it mm-hmm. but like there's the whole vibe the whole musical sound i don't know that i have a good analog yeah do you have did you have one i'm really I, I was really trying to kick around like why would you listen to this album or who did you like and maybe that was yeah. part of their issue yeah that they couldn't like once you heard it you're like oh this is really good but yeah. to describe it you know at first you I, I, I would say like if you like this band yeah, listen to this exactly yeah. i heard a little bit of like mm-hmm. taking back sunday at the time mm-hmm. Where it was like a little emo rock. Yeah. Not, it was not quite pop punk, although there were some mm-hmm. songs that were a little more, you know, pop punky. Mm-hmm. I heard some Blink 182 in terms of like the self titled yeah. Blink 182, where it was like, you know, you have these kind of like emo pop punk type yeah. of thing going on. And some of their lyrics are very like storytelling and sort of poetic. Yeah. Morning Air is one example. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I open, I'll kiss like the morning very, air and fly away. Yeah, yeah. it's this very romantic notion and things like that. I, mean, I, was, uh, if I, I would say maybe like Jimmy yeah. World. Um, I, as I feel like this is wrong, world. but I'm going to say because it's the only thing I could think of. Okay. Early Fallout Boy. Yeah, I, not I, not like from the court tree, but the one the album before yeah, yeah, that, maybe on a dead Saturday yeah. on it and stuff like that. I I think that can I feel like it's wrong, but that's the only that's the only thing I can come up with. It can definitely it can definitely fit the other band that I was going to suggest. That's kind of like that same type of vibe. Mm-hmm. Is not Fall Out Boy, um, but uh, the, hold on, it just escaped me what I was thinking. Not Jimmy Eat World. Not follow boy, but like, a song to me or, or a music video. Uh, it's it, it's they've they've just got so much like emo edge to them that, but they're not quite it, fully emo. My Chemical it, Romance, Matchbook Romance. It, yeah, it could be one of those bands yeah. that I was thinking of. Like My Chemical Romance is a people always associate yeah. them with Fall Out Boy, yeah. and they're not as dark as that. Like yeah. the songs are very positive for being yeah. emo. But he has a high voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to suggest this is going to be really niche for a lot of people, but we're already doing an episode on the wedding. So, <laughs> so, so there's a band called Chiodos. And okay, I've heard. Their, I've heard the of the lead it. singer had a side project called Cinematic Sunrise, mm-hmm. and it kind of has that same high vocal style. Mm-hmm. That's like sort of proto emo. Oh, I was going to also. There's, I was going to say the early November. Um, as Don't a band. That. Yeah. Sorry. Like, sorry, these are all emo hits right. and classics. We can, we can like, move on. Yeah. If, so, if, we'll say this. If you know a band you think describes the wedding sound as like an analog of they sound like this, send that to us. Let us know what you think it is. So I, I just want to talk about some of the songs, though, if that's cool yeah. from this first yeah, yeah, do it. Let's do it. That being said, knowing that I can't quite put my finger on it, they had a good mix between – Songs that were really intense, high energy, yeah, and songs that were slow. Yeah, yeah they, they definitely did have some good, like, The Price for Love is a slower song. The same thing with the Song for the Broken. It's not, uh, whereas Wake the Regiment is, with the title of that, you know it's high tempo. Yeah. Go, even before you listen to it, you say, this song is called Wake the Regiment, you know it's high tempo, it's, it's, it's you know, moving. Yeah. The, I was going to pick my two other songs other yeah, than Wake the Regiment. Yeah, yeah. I was going to pick Joyride because I think that guitar yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, cool. I put that on a, a youth group playlist just yeah. because it was like, now that I listen to it now, yeah. it wasn't as good as I remembered. Like, won't you come and take a ride with yeah. me and take me to all the beautiful places? Yeah. So like, ah, that's kind of cheesy, I yeah. guess. But at the time, it was kind of cool and I liked the guitar parts in it. Yeah. Um, and the other one was Water Under the Bridge, mm. which, um, you know, it's this like, almost jazzy yeah. intro and then it has this like long evolving thing and if you actually listen to it all the way through it's got very much that same under oath essence that mm-hmm. you're talking about that's kind of like the song that's uh, it's dangerous business walking out your front door yeah, yeah. Drowning in my sleep. yeah it's like they do a little bit of that in the bridge where it's like really big where they have the pianos crashing guitars and then just like that 
background echo. Mm. So I thought that was a standout track because I was like, whoa, yeah. I was not expecting this from this band. Um, yeah. Everything else was great. If I had to rate this album, I think this is a five out of five for me. I, In terms of expecting an album to be good, yeah. more than half the songs are good yeah. where I would put them in a playlist. I think it's good. And I'm looking at this and I see you know, the first four plus or yeah. minus one is good. And then the middle four is solid. And then the end is solid. So yeah. to me, that's a five out of five. For, for me, if rating this particular album, I think it's four for me. Okay. Um, very good album. I think that um, some of the songs, like I, I, like I said, I pretty much remembered most of these songs when I re-listened to it. There's one here that is called four seven nine HXC, which I remember. Uh, yeah. yeah, which I remember, but I was like, I believe the name of it. I was just like, what the heck is this song? Do you know what that what that title means at all? I know HXC is hardcore. Yes, but I don't know what four seven nine is. That's their area code. Okay, I was, yeah, from from Arkansas. From Arkansas. Got right. it. So it was like an ode. It was like the song for the yeah. fans. Ah, so, yeah. so there was like a very common trope at the time if yeah. you're a hardcore band to write a song about how good your fans are. Yeah. The point being, if anyone knows this band, Stretch Armstrong, yeah, they yeah. had a song called The Record. Yeah. And it was like a big deal because their whole thing, they were kind of a Christian band, mm-hmm. yeah, but they were like a positive Christian band. Yeah. So their songs were hardcore. But they weren't hardcore as in violent or I'm going to fight you or anything. Yeah. They were hardcore as in like, I love you so much because it's so hard and you sustain us with your energy. To yeah. So 479 <laughs> HXC yeah. is, I think, that kind of song. I don't know if they actually listen to Stretch Armstrong. Yeah. Or two male band, you know, but Marker that, that, that's kind of, that's, I think that's what that's from. It's, okay. like, it's like, for us, yeah. it would be like 330 HXC yeah. or something. Uh, <laughs> the dirty two thirty. It's just a song yeah. about the fans and how much they love. Yeah. So, um, let's move on to polarity. Real quick, I'm going to give my top five songs from this. Okay. So from this album, obviously, I recommend "Wake the Regiment." Then I say "Morning Air," "Move This City," "The Price for Love," and "Song for the Broken." Those are my top great, five. It's a great list. Yeah. And to me, if if half, it's this is a shorter album. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just 12, like, 12 songs on it, and it is like probably 35 minutes or so. Yes, that's probably around right. Yeah, they're, most of them are, are around three minutes, and there's a couple that are five. Yeah. But yeah, let me pull it up right now so I can be uh, perfectly <laughs> correct. Nope, I don't have it, the number on me. I want to say it's around 35 yeah. minutes, but for me, if more than half of it is yeah. like this is good or I'm not oh, yeah. changing this then it's great. I yeah. think that it's really hard to do that, especially as a new band yeah. who's just trying to like get mm. their sound and sounding so unique. Yeah. And for crying out loud, they're from Arkansas, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, so what, you know what I, what I will say, thinking about my, my rating for this is like, I think maybe I'm rating against themselves. Yeah. Where I don't think this is their best album, yeah. but if I'm rating against like things in general, like other albums that we've listened to, this probably would be a five for me because like you said, I remember every song on it. Some of some of them so much that I could still sing all the words to it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that can be said about most of the other albums we've listened to, even like Under Oath and Reliant K to some extent. Um, I think that um, I know this is you know probably very much just for others. Like we love the wedding, and, and they're not quite so popular with other people, but. Man, Man, I love the wedding. Yeah. So let's talk about polarity. And so, Jerry, this is yes. your favorite wedding album, right? Yes. There. For, so, actually, hot take. I think they have a better offering. Really? Yes. Oh, Specifically, the EP that follows it. That was a good this, one. Which is called The Sound and the Steel, which we'll get to uh, soon. But uh, as far as, like, full album, yeah. polarity, I think, is their best one. Now, they only have three, but I think this is the best one because – Pretty much everything on it is is great or memorable to me in some way. Now, <clears throat> there are 15 tracks on this one. It's a little bit longer. They have one that's just like a musical intro. It's called The Call, which is like 45 seconds, and it's basically just like a, like a bunch of like horns playing, right? Um, but then everything else is like a full, a full real song. So f- 14 real tracks. And then uh, um, uh, one like instrumental like intro song. Um, looking at it, there's a lot of really good songs on here that I like a lot. My favorite one, uh, 
Mikey White. That's one of my favorite song it's on here. Be say your prayers. Um, it's not say your prayers. I'll sleep when I'm dead. It's not that one either. Wake the Regiment Part Two. That's right. Okay. You know, it, That's it's, it's, called, it's called The Last Stand or Wake the Regiment Two. That one's my very favorite. Uh, say your prayers, number two. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, it's, it could also be something that could change by the day, depending on my mood. But for today, as we're recording this, it's Last Stand. Yeah. Um, so for a follow-up yeah. song. I, yeah. It wasn't like. You know how sometimes it's like, yeah. oh, it's just the same thing, just slightly different. Like, yeah. it was cool because thematically you can tell it was the same type of yeah. song, but they, it's not exactly the same, which was nice. It was like, it's a full new song. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, 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 just, two, it just says, I, 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 the, the only thing that, that ties it to Wake the Regiment is that it says Wake the Regiment 2 in the right. title. Yes, pretty much. They, yeah. they, don't, they never say the phrase Wake the Regiment. It doesn't yeah. really sound anything like it. Right. It's like, um, I, guess, I guess it's maybe like the tone of it. It's yeah. like it's very much like like a, a, like like a fighting yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, license that one too in your soundtrack. Oh yeah. You well, yeah, yeah. Real, yeah. If you do the battle at the beginning and do the battle at the end. If you license like the regiment, you get like the regiment too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bonus. We're throwing it in. We're yeah. package deal. I, I love that job. Call me. We'll make this up. Right. <laughs> Only Christian artists from the 90s and 2000s, but we'll do it. We'll add them to the library. Awesome. For me, yeah. say your prayers. This that song is, rules. That's the best wedding song. The best, yeah. the best yeah. ever. Yes. In my opinion, yes. sure. I like Wake the Regiment. Yes. I think it's an amazing song. Yeah. But if I had to give someone one song yeah. to say, like, check out this band, yeah. they're so different. It's say your prayers. Say prayers, I will say, is better than Wake the Regiment 1. Yes. And like I said, it changes. It could change. If you ask me tomorrow, I might say say your prayers. But today, as of this recording, it's a, I mean, it's really like a one and two yeah. so close that I, I can't really make a call for me between those two. So, yeah, say your prayers is excellent. And, and I would say you're probably right that if you could only recommend one song, that song is a better recommendation than Last Stand. Yeah. I just think it stands out as like yeah. you get a better feel for what this band could be. Yeah. Whereas Wake the Regiment is great on its own. Yeah. But if you're expecting every song to be like that, Sailor like, Birds is more unique. I think yeah. it's uh, like Wake the Regiment is cool, but yeah. there are there are songs that sound like it. Yeah. I think Sailor Birds is more a more unique offering. Yeah. yeah. They have a trombone yeah. breakdown in like a very non ska song. Yeah. Like the chorus is not a ska type yeah. of breakdown like it's You're very not shaking into the song yeah it's a very catchy chorus but where they go with this it like is very like the energy is high it's a great first track um it sounds like yeah. something that if you heard this you you would want to know like who is this band because yeah. the singer is killing it like, yeah. he does a lot of different things it's it's a yeah. it's a great hit in yes. my opinion and this is the the song that has the most plays for them okay. on Spotify. Yeah. So this this one has four hundred and thirty three thousand plays as of still criminally under underplayed I think, but it is the most um, uh, as of this recording that I can find the most the most plays of any of their their songs. The next one being. I think uh, I'll sleep when I'm dead, which is the track that follows immediately after it. That's a good song. Too. Yeah, I yeah, like it that is. Song a lot. I mean. This this truly this album is I I think I like every song on it. Yeah. Um and there are some that I love, but all of them I like. There are none like you could put this on shuffle or just play it and I wouldn't be like, I gotta skip this. I don't like this one. Yeah. Which I you know, or like I'm not in the mood for this song or whatever it is. I think that um this album is great and again it, it does the thing but they have a lot of up tempo, quick songs, and then they have a lot of like slower, more um, like focusing on like the melodies and like the lyrics and stuff. But, like, there's one called Revelation, which is towards the, the back end of the album, which is like about the singer's wedding day mm -hmm. and like how much he's like you know excited to marry his wife and, and things like that, which is very much like uh, like a slow. A much slower, peaceful song. They're not. There's no screaming in that song, and he's like, "Yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of really cool stuff going on." So here's my music reviewer coming out of me, and I don't mean to sound super negative. Yeah, um, it's really hard for me. The hardest album for any band is their second album. Yeah, because you have the expectations, and they've probably written these songs from 
you know, the yeah. tour bus on their way home from Scrapper Stadium, yeah. right? It's very hard. Yeah. And so when I see things that are kind of like very similar mm -hmm. to the last album they put out, yeah. it turns me off a slight bit, yeah. right? Where it's like- You want oh, to see some growth, maybe. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is- refine the process. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love The Last Stand. It's great. But when, yeah. like, it sounds like they sat down and said, mm. okay, we're going to do a song like- this song on our last album. Yeah, yeah. This is the song that's on that album. You know, it's not always like that, but I feel like there's a there's a, it's a very long album. Yeah. Some of these songs feel kind of like reworks of trying to rework another song mm -hmm. on their last one. So that's my only criticism about yeah. this album that some of these songs sort of run together and it feels like they've explored that idea a little bit in sort of that not a paint by numbers approach, I guess. Yeah. I don't want to be that harsh, but just the idea that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they had the, the slow ish song that's like really emotional. And then they have the fast ish song that, you know, is like, like I find 40, right. Yeah. That to me is like four, seven, nine, eight, check C. Just yeah. so, different. so like to me, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. we've kind of like done that already. Yeah. So to do that again, mm -hmm. feels a little bit like they ran out of ideas in terms of like the structure of the album. Yeah. But what is really good is really good. Yeah. I just, my personal view, this album as a whole is slightly less good than the previous album where mm -hmm. I can listen to everything front to back. I think it's really mm -hmm. great and fresh. There's a few things on here that I felt like they were kind of following in the lines. Still a great album. I still like more of it than mm -hmm. I don't. That's just kind of my two cents. For me, yeah. this is a four out of five album. See, mine, mine's the reverse here. So this, this for me is is the five for the real album. Like I said, I think we'll, we'll get to it in just a second. I think that EP is every song on it hits. Every single song of it is 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 great. I love it. like looking through my Spotify. Like every single song on that EP is favorited. Yeah. So. Um, I guess what, let's maybe you want to talk about maybe like what your what what top five songs, top three songs, or whatever from this album. What do you think? Um, as I'm looking through here, like say your prayers, yeah. sleep when I'm dead. Um, I liked uh, Rebound, yeah, um, and obviously I liked The Last Stand. Yeah, what do you think about Schizophrenia? I didn't love it. You didn't love it, really? Yeah. I thought it sounded really interesting when I was yeah. listening. It sounded different. Yeah. yeah. It was different, yeah. but it just didn't hit with me the way some of the other ones hit in the previous album. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess I, – I guess I, I, I thought yeah. it was interesting, but yeah. it just wasn't something that stood out to me as like, wow, I want to see more. And I get yeah. that. Like, they, they explored a ton of different yeah. territories, and sonically it's yeah. kind of different. It just didn't really hit home with me. What do you personally. think about the, uh, the the love song, Revelation? I thought it was good. Yeah. yeah. Did as a, as an adult now that's married, did it hit you any differently than it did as a as a teenager? Um, to be honest, I didn't listen to it that closely. Okay. Like the lyrics, I'll have to look up the lyrics and things like that. Um, so just I think if I if I was going to give a top five for this album, uh, number one for me, The Last Stand, aka Wake the Regiment Two, Say Your Prayers. A one two punch, right, right together. Yeah. Um, I really like "I'll Sleep When I'm Dead" and "Staring at the Light." And then I think I would say, if I had to pick a, a fifth one, it's for me. It's either "It's Time to Rock," okay, or "Schizophrenia," okay. where I, I'm not maybe not quite so sure. Those, are, yeah. but for me, I think those are the best five. I said I really like all the songs on this album. I I listened to the whole thing. I've been listening to it for a couple of weeks or whatever, for whatever reason, I just kind of like found my way back to the wedding recently, which is why I was like pushing for us to do this episode yeah. today. I made my wife listen to it. Yeah. Obviously she'd never heard of them before, of course. but she was like, she told me, she was like, I'm into this. And she said, if I'd known about this in high school, I would have been really into it. So she, so yeah. Nice opportunity yeah. to see those marketing folks. Oh yeah. Man, we could yeah, have been so the market market too. Yeah. You know what, Jared? We could have met them yeah. after and said, Hey, listen, yeah. we'll take your career to the next level. You want to boost your MySpace yeah. plays? <laughs> yeah, we can get you some plays. We we'll, we'll make you the top three. We only work on MySpace, though. We don't yeah. work on Zanga. Right. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I, I was playing some of this for, for, for my wife, being like, Hey, check out this band I really liked in high school. Uh, and then, like, later that night, I'm like downstairs and I hear, uh, <laughs> like, 
wake the red and echoing from our bathroom upstairs and she's taking a shower. And I was like, yeah, was she's like, on board. Let's go. Board. go. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. No, there, side note, I just yeah. Googled the revelation. Yeah. Revelation, the wedding. Yeah. Annoying because all I get are the book of Revelation commentaries. Oh, that's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I get yeah. another impossible Googling yeah. song title. And really, really they're, 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 yeah. as, as you might find in the lyrics to Schizophrenia, I think. Yeah. They're all over the Yeah, it's just, I found it eventually. Song, yeah. Yeah, I found it yeah. eventually. I just find that to be a funny anecdote yeah. that is... You know, you don't think about that. It's a cool name. Yeah. I like the name "The Wedding," to be honest. But I, I do like Daniel Wedding. Daniel Wedding is better. It's a little bit better. Um, I do like yeah. some things from this album. Before we move on to yeah, the next yeah. one, there are a lot of songs that had a very southern rock feel to yeah. them, like more so explicitly. Um, there are some bands that were doing this at the time, so yeah. I can't give them full credit. Like Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. Uh -huh. Have you ever listened to them? Never heard of them until just now. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so like they're a very like Southern hardcore type yeah. of band, right? Where they were very like Leonard Skinner type riffs with screaming, and yeah. so there's a little bit of these things in in some of these songs, which I thought yeah. was really cool that they played some more of this. You know, they leaned into the Southern thing, thing which is where let I think me, the Dangle Wedding let came me, in. Let me throw this at you as, as a, a, a potential uh, band that might sound somewhat similar. And now, stay with me here, because I, I know that it's, it's, it's not exactly the same, but I think that there are parts of Family Force 5 that sound like... Now, I know Family Force 5 is a lot more like goofy, but they're from the South. Right, uh, I think they had some of those same influences. Interesting now, take. I know this is a hot take here. This is a hot take. Like I said, I don't think it's. I think it's more so not as a whole, but I think they have certain songs that sound maybe similar, like uh, "Replace Me," maybe more so because that is like the song where Family Four Five has like yeah. some screaming in it. The rest of the songs, like "Southern Gentleman" or whatever, no, right. that doesn't sound like them, obviously. Yeah, but I, I, I think. Yeah, maybe just that one song, but I think that they're I think that they maybe like had some similar influences and then they each diverged down different paths, but you could kind of see it in in uh, some overlap there. Yeah, Am I totally point. insane here? No, you know what? Okay. We'll let the listeners decide. Yeah, tell, me, tell me if you think that any songs from the wedding sound like any songs from Family Force Five. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's talk about your favorite album yeah. now. Um, if you, I, yeah. I think that the sound the steel yeah. is the worth is worth mentioning yes. one because the style of this album yeah they had all their song titles start with R yes they all R E R E yeah. yeah so every every single one of the, the so the the album songs are are receive return renew reveal redeem and then you had rebound on yes. clarity, so they yes. could have added it to that. They, they, they could have. They wanted it to. And then there's also an, an acoustic track of, of one of the songs on there. But right. um, so five songs on this EP. I, I remember when this came out because um, this came out in 2008. So when I was probably a, a, a junior or so in, in high school or whatever, and I remember listening to it, and I was like, the hits keep coming. They keep coming one after the other because I I liked. Like and not just like oh this is fine. I really liked every single song on this album. I liked them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't. The thing that I didn't remember this EP at all mm -hmm. until uh, when I was going through this and I listened to them and I was like, oh, I know every single word to every single song on here. Yeah. There's latent in my brain somewhere, just laying in wait for me to refine it. Yeah. And I was and, it, and what I did it was just like this huge. Like dopamine rush, I was like, yeah. I love this. I love this so much. Um, so when I when I say when I when I'm saying I think this is their best offering, the reason I'm saying that is because for me, I think I love every single song. There's not one that I think is like, and and I do think that they are different. They are they are significantly different in some ways as I'm listening to them. Like they don't all just sound like the same, like a copy of the same. They're, they're trying different things on them. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think that this is the best single thing that they put out only because from, again, for me, every single song hits 
They're all bangers. The hits keep coming, yeah. one after the other. Another one. Another one. Yeah. I, I love it when yeah. the album is like is like that, where there's yeah. more like they just kept their best. Like yeah. maybe they could have turned into a full album, yeah. but they didn't. They yeah. kept like, hey, this is like enough that it doesn't feel yeah. like too short of an EP. Yeah. Like there's a fair amount of songs, right? There's it's six five, tracks. Five songs. Five five songs. Six, yeah. six tracks. One of them's an acoustic of one of, of the songs. Yeah. That's and that's to me is like the number of songs that I liked on their first album, yeah. probably like really, yeah. really liked. You yeah. know what I mean? So but that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. It's like the, the number again, like I, I really, really liked those five songs on their self-titled album. I mean, I probably really, really liked, you know, four to five songs on polarity. I liked all of them, but there was like four that I love. Yeah. This entire thing, they were all those songs. Yeah. So it's interesting because this is the album where they got a new singer. So yeah. there's a band called Letter Kills, who we listened to a little bit before, mm -hmm. who are kind of legends in the Christian but not Christian mm -hmm. screamo space. In essence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know the vibe. Yeah. Um, they're they're pretty known in like the underground emo ish scene, and so that singer sounds a little different. Did you did you prefer I, his vocals, or did you think I'll you just kind of picked up right where? Tell you didn't notice until you told me. Okay. <laughs> now on the other album, their third album, I noticed that was a different singer. Yeah, I did definitely. notice that, but this one did not know until you told me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the songwriting is really, yeah. like they've really hit their stride on yeah. on this. Uh, uh, the sound, the steel. Yeah. I just love thematic albums, and it's a short and thematic album. Yeah. So sometimes EPs are like a throwaway collection. Yeah. Oh uh, well, I gotta add that song in yeah. to make it four or whatever. And, you, and yeah, usually like an EP has like one song that's worthwhile yeah. and a bunch of throwaways, and right. this one was. It was like, hey, like, and, and even you can tell yeah. with the song titles, it was yeah. like they actually thought about mm -hmm. that kind of thing, right? Receive, return, mm -hmm. renew, reveal, redeem. Yeah. It was neat. The train sounds yeah. throughout it are kind of cool. Um, and, and so looking at, at like their discography, right? So they have The Wedding, the self-titled releases in 2005. They have another EP called The Rumble in the South, which is that was um, hilarious. a bunch of like um, either unreleased songs. They're all songs that I, with the exception of maybe one, that um, are featured or released elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, then in 2007, they released Polarity. Then in 2008, they released The Sound of the Steel. So they're doing like one thing a year or so. So the album EP, album EP, then nothing until 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and then that we get into the that, that album is called No Direction. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to it. Um, did not uh, enjoy it quite as much as the other ones, obviously, because there wasn't like a nostalgia factor for me mm -hmm. going into it. Um, and I, I just, when I was listening to it, I, I, I thought to myself, I was like, this feels like they're not as unique anymore. I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it was about it, like what had happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there was one song I really liked. It was called Young and Dangerous. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just resonated with me because it was like, about being old and remembering when you were cool, mm. and, and that was, I was like, you know, maybe that maybe that's a little too close to home to me or whatever. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I mean, there were some songs on there that were like, I was like, they're they're fine, but I wouldn't, I, I like if they were making like a best of album, mm. I don't know that any of the the tracks from this album would make it for me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, like I said, I, I didn't listen too much yeah. to this. I kind of flipped through it just to see yeah. if there's anything that stood out. But to me, it's remember, young and dangerous to listen. Okay. Tell me what you think. We're a podcast that unpacks the Christian cultural touchstones of the 90s and yeah. 2000s. That we grew up with. Yeah, that we grew up with in the yeah. 90s and 2000s. Yeah. And, and this, this was in well in college when this yeah. came out. Yeah. So if I'm graduating college by the time it's yeah. out, you know, I might as well review Fleet Foxes at that point. Yeah. Right? It's just... <laughs> You know, come on, whatever. Yeah. So, um, so, so wanted to give it, you know, our the the justice to say that I, I did listen to it. I, I and but I, I think if you're gonna check out the wedding for the first time, if you're gonna listen to this project and say I never heard of this band, let me check it out. I think the album to start with, you can't go really go wrong with either the sound of the steel polarity or the self titled. Don't start with their most recent one. Yeah. So let's talk yeah. about where are they now, yeah. right? Because I always find this interesting. Oh, it's yeah. been almost two decades probably since they yeah. first started. 
So started in Arkansas. I looked up the lead singer. He is a realtor yeah. selling homes. Original, original singer? Yeah. Yes, original yeah. singer, yeah. Um, Kevin, who yeah. is, is now a realtor selling homes in the Fayetteville area, I believe yeah. is where they're from. Yep. So Correct. sounds like he's back in his hometown, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking for a home in or around the Fayetteville, Arkansas area, Let's go, man. Right. Hey, if you get a job for Walmart and they want you to relocate, yeah. I think they're there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the biggest employer around there. Yeah. Um, the I believe the bass player is in Project 86, according to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which well, is yeah, another so band the, that I'd love to get into at some point in yeah, time. Definitely want to do a Project 86, um, you know, uh, episode. We also saw them play live one time. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, would definitely be worth doing a, a whole episode about them at some point. Now, what Mike mentions that, yeah, obviously the wedding has uh, disbanded at this point. They they are on uh, they, are they on an indefinite hiatus or, or fully uh, disbanded? Do you know? I think they're probably fully disbanded yeah. at this point. Where yeah. you know, it's I don't a lot think they've easier. Done anything since like 2015 or 16 yeah. or something, maybe? But according to the last yeah. message on their Facebook, yeah. it was 2015. So. Yeah. You know, rest you have of, rest of power the wedding. Yeah. You know, you know what? I thought that I mean, maybe they would get signed to a label or something like yeah. that at that point. Their latest version, interestingly enough, that latest album that you didn't like was yeah. on Tooth and Nail. Yeah, I know I know but it was, yeah. That was that was after Tooth and Nail's heyday, in my opinion. Yeah. Like that they were probably you know, yeah. half a decade too late for the peak of yeah. Tooth and Nail there. But if they, if they had been on Tooth and Nail in 2006, 2007 or whatever, they would have been, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think they could have been a contender. Yeah. So yeah. I guess some closing thoughts then. So it sounds like they've moved on. I'd love yeah. to see them again. If they did a reunion tour, I would love for them to come back yeah. to Ohio. And certainly we yeah. treat them well. We yeah. have, have introduced – Many a friend to the yeah. wedding through our youth group mixes. Yeah. Always, and, always yeah. recommended. Yeah, yeah, they were great. I, I, I feel bad. Honestly, that's that's kind of yeah. other than feeling bad for what I did to that poor kid's baseball. <laughs> I just kind of feel bad that some people work so hard, yeah. and it's not always the most talented ones that yeah. win. You know what I mean? They right. were a super talented band. I think that they put out a great product. Super yeah. talented vocalist, singer, guitar player. Like yeah. they were a good band. But yeah. it just didn't have the, and, and like the said, energy. And they did have, you know, overt, um, again, maybe not songs where they're saying Jesus or God in them, but very much like Christian undertones to them that you could very clearly pick out. They were not like weld. They were not intended to be disguised or anything. Like they were very much like this is, a you know, a song that is, is you know, Christianity is, is present and obvious in the lyrics and themes of this song or whatever, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think is, is definitely uh, a selling point for, uh, you know, a band at, at that time. Like if you were in youth group, you wanted to listen to like a hardcore band, right? Here's the wedding. And they've got songs like wake the regiment or say your prayers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they also have songs that are very clearly like, you know, Christian songs that you can, um, you know, maybe, use that as like a way to maybe you want to uh you know share it with some of your friends that are not always like hey check out this band maybe they yeah. hear it and and whatever and then then you can then you also do the uh the hard the hard work of of uh you know sharing it off for yourself you let the one right. do it hey, for you hey here's yeah. a cd go listen to it and yeah. let me know what you think i'll yeah. explain it to you when you're done <laughs> <laughs> the most easy yeah. slacker way of doing it yeah, but yeah. I guess on a more serious note, I, I really did enjoy them. I really enjoyed all their music. Yeah. I think that really, just looking at it, I, mm -hmm. again, not a music business guy. Yeah. I'm just sort of interested in how this works. But mm -hmm. it just felt like, you know, yeah. were they a Christian band or a non-Christian band? There's a lot of Christian bands that get a lot of play outside of that Christian bubble. Yeah. I don't know anyone who like wasn't tangent to one of those bands that either they toured with yeah. or – you know, we're familiar with Matt Thiessen from Reliant K yeah. that knew of the wedding. And it felt like they got the worst of both worlds where yeah. they were a small time Christian band, but mm -hmm. had a ton of mainstream appeal. Yeah. It's just for some reason 
they yeah. didn't connect with it. You know, we, we should mention briefly uh, the song that Matt Thiessen is featured on is but from breath. is but a breath from their self titled yeah. uh, debut album. Yeah. If you're looking to check that out, that's the song. Yeah, um, we got a message from one of our podcast friends. Did you want to read that um, about the wedding? Yeah. yeah. So um, we, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Mike and I like uh, to to listen to other podcasts and, and we uh, uh, had had some, some interactions with um, this podcast on our, on our Instagram, they were commenting, we were commenting back and forth. Um, and so we, we, you know, we, we check them out, you know, support our, our, our friend, our Instagram friend. So uh, um, the podcast is called church jams now. So for anyone who's maybe interested on like a deeper dive into like uh musical aspects of things like we do kind of like surface level like did we like it or whatever this is like very do we have any memories associated with it yeah yeah, yeah. do we have any memories do we remember this being played at a youth group or did we go see them at a youth group event or whatever Uh, this podcast is very much they they take a single album from uh you know you know certain artists like let's say um like cities from Anne Berlin or two less don't make a right, but three do from Reliant K. And they go track by track and talk about like the composition and some things like that. And whether or not, again, like the same idea, like whether or not did they like it or whatever. Um, so if, you know, that's something that interested you, if you're really interested in the musical side of it, maybe give them, check them out. But I, uh, I was listening to one of their podcasts and offhandedly one of the guys in the podcast was just like, Oh yeah, when I was in high school, our our, our worship band at our church was the wedding, and I was like, "What? <laughs> That's insane!" And so I uh, I messaged them, um, and I was like, "Hey, uh, listen to this! Like, that's wild that the, the the wedding was your worship band." And, and uh, they messaged us back, uh, and they said, uh, "So they said, yeah, it's wild. They used to be called Easier Said, which." Maybe they should have stuck with that name, but easier to find. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, is still the top of the three. Daniel Wedding is clearly what they should have gone with, but um, easier to find a band called Easier Said, maybe. Um, so, so it used to be called Easier Said, and they led worship for my little 20 ish person youth group. Um, I so wish that I could find a video of it, but I specifically remember when their first album dropped, they came into the Sunday morning service and performed morning air in their full emo get-ups with wristbands <laughs> and tight pants, the whole nine cards. It was so awkward, but it was so cool. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, shout out to the guys at uh, Church Jams Now. Um, uh, give them, go check them out if you get a chance, and uh, hopefully when they do... An episode on the wedding, you can we can uh, hear their uh, their. And, and, you know, I don't know how close they were with these guys. Maybe they're still in contact. Maybe we get Kevin to take a break from his realtor job and come yeah. on the podcast. Quick, yeah. Hey, quick, in and out. No. You know, thirty seconds. Yeah. Basically, the funny thing yeah. about that story of yeah. why it kind of is so interesting to me yeah. is like we had the same experience where yeah. it was like. It was just like us and twenty people, yeah. <laughs> and we we're like, yeah. there's two of us. We we're like, yeah, yeah we're really yeah. good. These guys are amazing, yeah. and everyone else is like, huh? The yeah. wedding? Yeah. I, I do yeah. want to say that I, I think it counts that uh, Mike and I were members of the wedding for about mm, fifteen seconds, yeah. and I think yeah, I think that counts absolutely. <laughs> so for that for that youth group reunion tour, yeah. When it comes through Ohio, yeah. I'll give you my address. I'll we'll, we'll, come in, we'll scream with the regiment if you That's need right. us. <laughs> I'll let the yeah. neighbors know. That we're yeah. about to wake the regiment. Yeah, Kevin or any other member of the wedding, if you want to come past or present, if you want to come on the podcast, let us know. Glad to have you. Yep. We love the wedding. And uh, any, any final thoughts on the wedding? Uh, just that they rule. And they, if you haven't heard them, you should definitely check them out. We gave you you know specific songs. Go check them out. I think you'll like them. Tell us who you think they sound like so that I uh, we can give a better answer next time instead of Family Force 5 or Fall Out Boy so I don't look like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> they, to me, they're a great, consistent yeah. band, front to back. Yeah. All their catalog was great. There's no real yeah. major things that I was like, oh, this is yeah. not something that I would be proud of. Yeah. They they rocked live despite playing for probably a terrible sound. They were setup. going for it. Yeah. I would say that they were going for it, even though they like they were playing it like they were playing, you know, the House of Blues or something like that was like 
Yeah, people were packed in. Like they were they truly yeah. giving us yeah. what they had. It was it ruled. It ruled. It was amazing, yeah. and I could tell that like some bands would think like, "Oh, it was a formative yeah. memory for me." I was like, "This it rules! Was, this is so awesome!" Yeah, it was awesome. No, I I, I wish that I had that kind of stage presence because I remember yeah. what I remember from that live show is that everyone was yeah. like really into it. Like oh, their yeah, stage yeah. moves were like on the same level as the bands who are really doing it. Yeah. Like, they were moving around. They were yeah. flipping their guitars around. That's, yeah. They do the move where they throw their guitar on their shoulder and spin it yeah. around and then keep playing it. It, it, yeah. it was a little bit of that action. Not quite showbread yeah. level, but yeah. it was it was up there. Yeah. So anyways, I think they're great. You should listen to them. Um, you know, if you're a person who uses TikTok, you should – Make TikTok dances to wake the regiment. Uh, yeah, I think that this- put together, put together, a, put together uh, you know, a montage of someone getting ready from like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie or something, or like when John John Wick's getting kitted out in John Wick Two and put wake the regiment over it. Yeah, hashtag wake the regiment challenge <laughs> for charity. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to charity. We'll have people do the wake yeah. the regiment we'll challenge. Give, we'll give a hundred percent of the money we make from this podcast. <laughs> To charity. Yeah, that is one of the best. On this episode. Listen. <laughs> so right now, we're going to go take like $40 from a charity. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what. <one. laughs> well, don't hit it to us. Yeah. For the microphones. <laughs> no, um, seriously though, uh, I think they're great. You should listen to them. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Comments on yeah. our if you're a first time page. listener to the wedding, let us know what you think. Yeah. We hope you like them. Hit us up on our socials. If you're on Instagram, we are at Youth Group Reunion Tour. On Twitter, we are at YG Reunion Tour. If you'd like to send us an email or Instagram message, that's fine too. We might read it on air, shout you out. You know, we're we're cool like that, but our email is youthgroupreunionTour at gmail.com. If you want to get in the advanced listener stage, we have a few people starting to join the Discord. So if you want to access Discord and Reddit and all those sort of second tier types of things for the super serial fans where the friends of the show hang out yeah. and the special you guest cast. You yourself could chat with a friend of the podcast, Caleb. He's in the Discord. <laughs> you could. You could even play video games with him if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Splatoon 3 or Smite. We're in. <laughs> we'll see. Anyways, um, if you want to access that stuff, we have a YAT page. So a YAT is an emoji domain, but it's Y.A.T. And our emojis are cool, church, raised hands, guitar. And you type those four yeah. emojis in and it's, you'll get access. It's to Y.A.T. Discord. backslash and then those emojis. Yep. So uh, anything, we'd love to hear what, what you have to say. If you'd like to be on or you'd like to join, I know we have a bunch of people in the queue I'm kind of busy. I yeah. started doing a, a new church plan type yeah. of thing going on. So my time is somewhat limited. We appreciate everyone's patience with everything going on. We got a lot of cool stuff in the works, though. Things are happening behind the scenes. Yeah. We got a great board of ideas. But if you have yeah, ideas. We got a whole board set up of ideas and guests, potential guests and things like that. We're trying to reach out again. If you want to be on the podcast and you want it personally, let us know. We'd love to have you on. Or if you have a weird story like the wedding yeah. was your youth band or something like <laughs> yeah. that, I'd love I'd love to be able to talk about the history that's not on Wikipedia or yeah. not on Google. So like, we can get it on Wikipedia. That's right. We can, we can be the reference point. We'll yeah. be the notable reference <laughs> yeah. point. Tell your story yeah. and potentially get it added to Wikipedia yeah. for media purposes. <laughs> that's that's the goal. No, we love that kind of stuff. If you if you saw a band that came to your youth group that you loved or you saw a movie or something that was really impactful in terms of that i'd love to be able to hear your stories and we can do a whole episode about it so and now uh, uh, without further ado mike and i are finally in the same room again so we've got no delay here so we're going to get this this closing thing we're going to get it right we're going to do it together okay all right mike here we go so until next time we'll catch you on, on the, the flip, flip side, side. Woo! That was pretty good. Check this out.